Because surely he is in the midst, one thing, and he is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. And he is looking to restore hearts, blessings, and favor. He is the God who restore hearts. He is the God that brings forth deliverance. Hallelujah. And we just bless him on tonight for who he is. 
Hallelujah. And what he yet continue to do. Blessings and favor to all of you that are coming on and all of you in your respective places. I love you all. Of course, of course, of course, of course. I love you all. And I'm glad to be talking about this topic on tonight. I've been sharing much about this um, a lot for the last few days, weeks, but I've been building upon um, what, how God has allowed me to build upon it. Um, and you know, when I came back on, um, social media, I started off talking about idolatry. That was the first area. And I'm really not know. I didn't know from, you know, from that moment, how God was, how God was really bringing me into the place of talking about narcissism. But then I started to see like, okay, God, you start talking about first about idolatry. And then, you know, he started talking about deliverance and stuff. And then, um, really, really expounding, really opening up my eyes to, um, to such an area of narcissism. And I'm also seeing how others that's even in the body of Christ, um, great, um, excuse me, those, ugh, uh, excuse me, those that are in, the, um, you know, many that are in the body of Christ, they're really talking about this topic as well. And, you know, many of them I'm gonna say this about, um, that is speaking on this area of narcissism, that many of them have come out of, um, abuse that come out of, um, um, they have been abused by narcissism, whether it was in a marriage, whether it was in a relationship, uh, whether it was as far as um, leadership um, in ministry or leadership, even on the job. You can find narcissism in so many different areas. And, and you know, it's, it's extremely prevalent, especially in the body of Christ. And I'm really seeing how many um, across the board is really talking about we really targeting this spirit in this hour. And there's many that are really graced to really um, target this area. Some some have been talking about it as far as in the area of um, in the behavior aspect of narcissism. Some um, they they're in the clinical field, so to speak. So they see it from the from that perspective of how a narcissist, um, you know, this is, you know, it's like again, as far as the the behavior side and then um then you may have someone that is talking about it on um on the side of how they went through their abuse but then um god one area that god has given me because i've also had um the the abuse of a narcissist and really um the other side that the lord has really really downloaded it to me it's primarily really lately really strongly have been the revelation behind it and really the different types of spirits that an operation behind um the spirit of narcissism and so at the same time um you know um even even though yes you can you can go through that level of abuse of um of uh, really being attacked by a narcissist, but we also have to understand that just like with anybody else, they need deliverance too. They need deliverance too. But we have to also be really wise when it comes to the spirit, you know, come when it comes to narcissism, a, a person that operates in, as a narcissist is because of the subtleness and their way of trying to get back in. Because if one thing I, I do know about um, being abused and, and, and as far as that spirit is concerned is that if that person is not delivered, listen, I tell people a lot, if that person is not, you know, straight up delivered, um, do not, you know, I advise you not to allow them to come back into your life because really what they're coming back to do, they're really coming in for the kill. So if they didn't kill you the first time, you know, and, and that's how the enemy operate, especially if you operate really strongly um, in, in the grace of God. The one thing the enemy is going to do, he's going to target you at every at every enemy is necessary. So he's going to be looking to really take you down. And so a lot of times, too, he will send a, um, a narcissist to really tear you down before you even get to your, your next level of, um, of ministry. Um, anytime you're ready to step over into another area, um, the enemy will always send, um, he will always send a distraction. He will always send, um, someone that operates in, in this particular spirit, so to speak. But again, I'm, I'm, I always say is that the individual themselves, you know, really need deliverance. They really need deliverance. And I've really been strongly praying for those that, that I do know that, that, that have that, um, narcissist spirit. And I do pray for them because I want them to be delivered as well. That would be a remarkable testimony, um, you know, and it's to the glory of God. If we can just, you know, see just seeing God just really bring forth deliverance in those that um, have been walking in this particular 
um, area for a long time, this um, having a spirit for a long time. And it's just really to the glory of God. I just really want God to be glorified in everything. I want God to just, you know, just really, um, just really be lifted up in everything. And so this, again, this has just been an area of, of, of targeting because I really believe that God wants to set them free. And God also want to set those that they have been victims for a long time. There's some that's, that's really uh, been under the, the, the abuse of a narcissist for years. And some of them are still wounded. And, you know, and they, 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 they're in a place of fear. They don't want to come out. Um, they don't want to break the silence. And so um, there, there's a lot of fear there and they're still wounded. They're still in a place of woundedness. And so we also have to be mindful even of those that have been in abuse um, situations because one thing that I, I do I do know for myself is that when you've been abused um, in any kind of way, especially if you've been physically abused or psychologically abused, uh, one thing that you, if, if you're not um, delivered or have not gone through your healing process, you are what you will have what I call triggers. And that's something that um, I, I'm actually writing, have been writing um, a book on uh, for some time now that I really need to finish. But, um, and, and I've been in that book, I've been talking about triggers and especially for those that, um, that are coming into a marriage covenant, that the things that to look for, the things um, um, to really go through deliverance, because one thing that we don't do um, a lot of times in coming into a marriage covenant is that we don't go through deliverance. You know, we have our, oh my God, I'm getting married and, and everything, but we don't pay attention to the red flags. We don't pay attention to all the, all the different signs and stuff. And sometimes that person can be your spouse. However, God would tell you, Hey, I want you to pull back because that person need to be delivered first before I can even, you know, bring you both together. So it takes a lot of, of, of really, um, hearing from the Holy Spirit. I tell a lot of times people, you know, there's certain ex aspects of your life that you really have to take to God. You know, you really have to really take to the Lord and really stay in that place of prayer and intercession pertaining to certain things so that the enemy will not trip you up. And so, you know, we have to always have a place of guarding our heart. The scripture tells us to guard our heart with all diligence because out of the flow are the issues of life. And so we have to always be in a position to guard our heart. And the other thing that we have to make sure that we do as well as you know the scripture also tells us you know to, to trust in the Lord with all our heart lean not to our own understanding but in all of our ways or in all of our ways acknowledge him and he'll direct our paths and that's something that we don't do often we don't acknowledge we don't acknowledge Jesus we don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit enough so that he can direct our paths so that he can show us things so that he can you know cause things to manifest and and I remember some years ago and sometimes, you know, we, we hear the older saints say certain things and we, we kind of brush it off and, oh, okay. But then, you know, the older saints, one thing I learned about being around older saints, which I totally love, always love being around seasoned, seasoned saints. I love them because, you know, they always, they have a level of wisdom that we have yet to, um, they have a level of wisdom that we have yet stepped over into. So they, they, they pour out their wisdom into our lives. And, you know, and that's, that's not our, 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 um, you know, that's not the time for us to, you know, like be uh, okay, whatever, because I guarantee you that wisdom that was poured into your life that was given from God is going to always come back up in your life somewhere down the road. You're going to hear that same, that same uh, word that's going to, that's been in your spirit. It's going to come back up and be like, you know what? I remember then when pastor said so-and-so, I remember when sister so-and-so or mother so-and-so said, but I remember years ago when, um, one of um, the pastors uh, was saying, you know, wait, you know, sit back and wait, 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 don't be such in a hurry, you know, and, and he had every right to even talk about this particular area because he was, you know, God really had graced him and in marriage. And so he really ministered in the area of marriage. He ministered a lot about marriage within our congregation. And, you know, God had really graced him where we didn't have absolutely really no divorce within our congregation it was very few we, we i mean i don't even remember anything about 
having any divorces within our congregation. You know, we had people that was there that was married for uh, for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Some of them married for like 50 and 60 years. And some of them that's, that's you know, that's still living today, they're still married to their spouse. And so there was, a, you know, such a fruit that was bared so greatly within our midst and within my midst that I was able to observe and understand and really take the wisdom you know, that was, that was given to me. And I remember him saying, you know, Hey, you know, sometimes you have to sit back, even if it's two, two years, you know, in, in that time, um, that time span, because usually what happens is that, you know, everyone can act, can act for a few, for a little while, you know, until the real them start coming out, <laughs> you know, cause the scripture tells us that the, the tree is known by its fruit. And so eventually that true fruit is going to start to manifest that you can only act but for so long before your real you start coming out. And so, you know, God really began to really minister to me about that, um, about that particular area, because yes, we can be in a haste, and a lot of times we are, and then we end up getting into a covenant and we're like, oh my God, I can't believe what I did, but now you're in it. And then there's an area of pride that comes in and, you know, you're like, well, I don't want anybody to know because I done, you know, I done made it, you know, I told everybody I had this great big wedding and stuff and they don't even know half of the hell that I'm going through behind closed doors. And so there's, there's an area of pride and then, you know, then the area of abuse start coming in. And again, the person, they're so isolated, they can't go and tell anybody about what they're going through. So, you know, just wanted to drop that part in there on tonight as well, as far as, you know, being, being mindful and being careful and dealing with this particular area and what we're talking about, this area of narcissism that is so very much needed and so much really necessary in this time that we're in because the enemy is getting even more subtle in his tactics. But if we, if we're constantly um, telling people to be quiet and trying to silence the mouths of, of, of those that really um, are graced and really speaking and really targeting um, the enemy in this hour, then, you know, then, then we're going to always be susceptible into falling, um, you know, falling into different things that um, that God does not want us to fall into. And so um, this is a, a really huge topic that God is really using many of us again in this hour. So I'm talking about their narcissism. And again, I want you to share that part and um, and and really expounding on it. So um, one area years ago that I even paid attention to, and I'm always going to give my own personal experience because I believe that a lot of times we do talk about different things and we don't have any backing on it. But it's good that we can actually um, share our own um, testimonies and, and different experiences with certain types of spirits and certain types of um, situations because that even gives you a greater um, a leverage, so to speak, because it's nothing like, you know, you know, going to somebody and they don't know what they're talking about. And it's like you just, you know. You know, it's like you just sitting there telling the person they they have no idea, like, oh my God, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. And it's like they can't help you, you know, <laughs> you know, because they don't know. They have not gone through what you've gone through. And so it's very important that to me, it's very important that I do share and I'm free to share um, these different areas in my own life because I understand that it helps other people to come out of what they're in. It helps other people. And that's really been the hall, the, also the, the, the mark of the ministry that God has given me where over the years, God really began to deal with me on, um, on not hiding or covering, you know, my testimonies and stuff like that because I used to be really, you know, it, it was, I would say, kind of shame of, of some of the things that I've gone through in my life. Um, and, and it really, you know, especially when you're around other people, they don't share their past experiences. So it's almost like, you know, you're, you're stifled and you got people, you know, you have people thinking that you, you never, you never gone through anything. And, 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 you know, that's not how God really wants to operate. Now there is a level of wisdom because there's certain things that I would never share openly um, uh, uh, publicly, unless the Holy Spirit tell me to share it. But a lot of things I share, I share with people that's extremely close to me that God allows me to be, um, you know, in covenant with, um, at certain times in, in my life, at certain times of their life. And I'm able to share those different nuggets so that they can too, um, come to a place of deliverance 
in their own life. Because again, you want to be able to, you know, if you're going to contact somebody or God leads you to somebody, you want to be able to share those different areas of testimony and not really being ashamed and saying, you know, I've been down that road. I know how I feel. I even know how you fell into that trap. I fell into that trap as well. You know, and that's another area that we have to begin to even look into. We have to look into our own heart. You know, how did I fall into this anyway? Even though the enemy sets trap, and yes, the enemy does um, send suggestions, but at the same time, you know, we 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 act out on those actions. We act out on it. So we can't always blame the enemy or we cannot always blame, you know, the narcissist. But there is also a part that we have played as well. And this is, again, this is something that a narcissist would never do. A narcissist would always point the blame. They would never admit. Listen, they would never. I don't care. They, they would take it to their grave. They would never admit that they were wrong in anything. If anything, everybody else is wrong except for them. They're always the good one. They never done anything wrong. You know, they never, you know, I, I didn't do it. You know, the devil made me do it. You know, the devil pushed me down that road. You know, but we have to begin to look in ourselves. How did, how, what, what was in my heart to allow that spirit to come in? What, what areas that were vulnerable, what areas that was weak. That's why it's important for us to really be true to ourselves, be honest with ourselves, and saying, you know what, God, I see. And allowing the Holy Spirit to really reveal those particular areas. And I know that I speak a lot about, um, especially coming into a relationship, because, like, again, many of us have those areas in our heart that's not totally submitted to the Holy Spirit. And when those areas are not submitted to the Holy Spirit, that's how a narcissist, the enemy is able to really come in and really target us like he wants to. And again, it may not always be in a, in a relationship. It can be on a job. It can be in a promotion. It can be when it comes to finances, you know, any area that's, that, that is, that is a, that sits as an idol on our heart is an easy, we become an easy prey for that spirit to be able to come in. So we have to be able to renounce, you know, come, you know, we have to be able to be honest and renounce and say, hey, God, you know, I bring this area to you in my heart. I renounce this, Lord God, you know, forgive me of areas that I may have that, that not, I, I may have opened up, but areas that I have opened up, you know, um, they have allowed this to come in because we do, we really have to be, anytime we come to a place of deliverance, and, and really come to the place of healing, it, it really takes um, really being humble. Because the scripture says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so when we humble ourselves before God and really, you know, pour out our heart and say, God, I want you to just deal with this area in my heart so 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 these things will not come back in again. And the Holy Spirit is so gentle. He, he does not condemn. That's the, the greatest thing about the Holy Spirit, you know, he's a comforter. He's not going to come in and be like, bam, you know, and, and, and he's going to, you know, when we go to him, you know, we don't have to, you know, it's when we don't go to him is when, you know, it's a, it's, it comes a, a greater, um, uh, what I say, um, consequences. But if we just go to him, you know, and really go to the father, you know, God will begin, he'll reveal those areas in our life. And, and that we don't um, act like we don't see those areas. When he starts to reveal those areas in our life, we don't just sit back and just be like, well, okay, God, and, and just overlook it like we don't see it, you know, but God, but really allow God, if we want God to really do a work in us, we have to come to the place and saying, God, yeah, that's, I, yeah, that's me. I did that and own it. You know, we own it, take responsibility. And that's something again, that the narcissist spirit would not do. <laughs> they would not take responsibility. Why? Because it's never their fault. They'll blame everybody else. They'll blame the cat in the house. If they got a cat in the house, they'll blame the cat. They'll blame the dog. If they got roaches, they're going to blame the roaches too. So, <laughs> you know, they're going to blame everybody except for, except for taking the blame and, and owning up to it. So, um, I'm going to move on now to the area of the Jezebel aspect to the, um, to the narcissist. And this is a this this is a like a master manipulator. And that's another spirit that is behind 
uh, um, a narcissist is that Jezebelic spirit. Behind that Jezebelic spirit. And again, we know that the, um, we know that the Jezebel spirit is, is, is a gender, gen, genderless spirit. It's not a female, even though, you know, it seems like we focus more on, oh, she's, she's a Jezebel. But that spirit also operates through men as well. It operates, operates through men as well. And one thing about the Jezebel spirit is this. If a person, this is something I learned some time back. If a person um, has someone in their life that had that that has a just best spirit, and I'm, I'm just gonna go off the limb and say because this is an area that I've experienced is a mother and a son, a mother and a son, and let's say that 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 son is so closely bonded to that to that mother. And that son is always looking for the mother's approval, but yet that mother is extremely um, um, verbally abusive to that, to that child, to that son, so to speak. That son, and I remember, I remember, because I've been down this, I remember, I've been down this road, so I know what I'm talking about. That person, he's not going to... Um, he, he's not going to defend for himself or stand up for himself to, to, to not so much in talking back to his mother, but pretty much standing up for himself. So if he, he if he does not stand up to, to his mother in certain areas of his life and he's a grown man, it's something you got to pay attention to. If he's a grown man, there is a level of responsibility that he is supposed to take on, especially in you being his mate. You know, he is supposed to, if anybody should should support, um, you know, he is supposed to support you 100%. But if he's taking the side of somebody else or taking the side of his mother, you know, when it comes to you, then that's an area that you really have to, you really have to pay attention to because he will more so be more quick to take up for his mother, although his mother is abusing him. Is verbally abusing him. He will not stand up to his mother for nothing, but he will come back because his mother don't like you. And his mother don't like you. Then what he's going to do, he's going to come back and take out his anger. He's going to come back and take out his rage out on you. And so that, again, that's an area that you have to pay attention to is making sure that if a person is, is closely connected to a Jezebel spirit, trust and believe they're going to take up for that person that carry that Jezebel spirit before they will even take up for you. And that goes both ways. That can be a, that can be a father and a daughter that can be, uh, that can be close too closely bonded. You know, it's okay to have a bond with your parents. However, and this is something that I was so glad that my mom um, was really, really, I, I loved how my mom really, my mom had a lot of wisdom in dealing with my sister and I, and I shared this a whole lot, because my mom never got in, she, she never got in any of our relationship matters or anything like that. My mom would just, she just did not. But a lot of mothers, they get into a lot of their, 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 their grown children, let me say that, their grown children lives in areas that they should not. There are certain areas that is completely off limits. And I understand that you can have your, you know, you can have a love for your son and your daughter, and that's what you're supposed to have, and, and and really protect your son and your daughter. But at the same time, not protect them so much in their wrong. But you know, but and and not being that parent where you abuse your child to the point of verbally abusing your child to the point of that child thinking about suicide, thinking about hopelessness, you know, all those areas, thinking about abandon, you know, being abandoned because that's how that narcissist spirit really comes into that person where, you know, they come, it comes, it starts at an early age and it starts where they're seeking to be loved by their parent and that parent, um, that parent, they have suffered, um, that child has suffered some type of abuse, whether it was molestation, um, or any of any area of their life. And that parent really wasn't, um, you know, really wasn't there to cover them. Or even when they went to tell their, their, their parent, Hey, this is what happened to me. And the parent does not believe them. That opens up the door for the spirit of abandonment. And so they feel like I'm left alone. I, you know, I feel isolated. Nobody believes me. So what ends up happening when they, when they, um, get older, they actually end up carrying that same thing out 
against other people. And if it, if it was a mother that that um that did that to them, they're gonna go they're gonna go on and they're gonna attack other women. They're gonna be on a prowl to go against other women. Anything that looks like their mother, listen. Anything that looks like their mother, they're going to target it. They're going to attack it. Anything, yeah, they may have loved their mother, but anything that looked like their mother, if it, if it was a level of control or, or something like that, they're going to attack it because, because of what they have gone through. And the person may not, you know, be some, especially with some of us and, um, some of us that, that, that operate really strongly. In, um, in certain areas, and some of us that's really that's really strong is not so much in, and this is where we get always labeled. Many of us women we get labeled as being a Jezebel because of our level of strength, and our level of strength does not mean that we are not submit that we're not submissive. You know that we don't submit, but we're not going to submit to anything, and we're not just going to submit to anybody. And so God gives us wisdom in that area of how to guard our level of submission as a woman. So God does really give us a strong level of strength because why? Because of what we carry, what we what we endure. One thing about women is that we're we're strong. We're we're strong women, you know, and it's and we we we're strong in our capacity. But when there are times of submission for us to submit, we know how to submit. We know how to come under. We know how we are graced. You know, many men, you know, they want a strong woman, you know, but, you know, they, they don't want, you know, a woman strong enough where she just won't tolerate your foolishness. You know, that's the difference. <laughs> you know, that's the difference. You know, no, we ain't supposed to bow to, to you know, to your foolishness and we're not supposed to bow to being dumb. <laughs> you know, come on, somebody. You know, we are to have, you know, we are to, um, you know, have a have a strong head on our shoulders and that doesn't mean that we are Jezebelic. That doesn't mean we are a witch. You know, I don't know how many times I don't know. anyway, but but that doesn't mean anything. I've seen some wonderful women in the faith that have operated really strong in their grace, but they were excellent wives, excellent wives, you know, to, to their husbands. And they knew even you know they knew how to submit. They knew how to come under submission. Even when it comes to, you know, whatever area that they operate in, whether it's on the job, you know, they know how to operate in their, in their capacity. But when it comes to the person that's over them, they knew how to come under. They knew how to submit. And so that there's a, that's a great um, attribute, you know, to, to have as a woman. And, and you know, if, you, if you're looking for someone that you can just do whatever to that, 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 that is weak and insecure, then that, that reveals your level of character and your level of insecurity. So never stop being who you are in God. Never stop being who you are in your identity in Christ. I talked about this the last time that I was doing a live and I talked about your identity. Your identity is extremely important and who you are in Christ and what God has called you to do. So so when you do come alongside, even with, with your mate, you have you have a part of you that to offer, you know, because they need that side of you to be mature, to be, uh, to be in a place of maturity in that, in that area. Why? Because there are certain areas that you're going to have to carry that he can't carry. And there are certain areas that, that, that he's going to have to carry that you can't carry. And so that's where we bring in the balance. That's where we bring in the balance. Come on here, somebody, you know, you don't want somebody that's completely just straight out, you know, Know, come on, God, God doesn't bring two broken people together and make a stick, you know, so, <laughs> so, so bringing in that particular area as well. And, you know, sp still talking about the area of Jezebel that's connected to, um, the narcissist spirit is this, is that it's a master manipulator. It's a master manipulator. And one thing that a Jezebel spirit does is that it will rally up its troops. You know, it always have they always have a team. They always have a team that's close to them. You know, a team, I, I would say sometimes it's always a team of prophets, quote, quote, unquote. You know, they always have a little team. And so they look, what their, what their team is, it's like they, they are the, um, um, their, their team is like the puppets, you know, their team is like the puppets. And the Jezebel spirit is the, is the master manipulator. And so, you know, they're going to go to, 
their, their little team, so to speak, and tell them, hey, you know, this person or whatever, especially if it has something to do with a relationship or a spouse, you know, this person, you know, and, and it's, uh, and it's always going to be where they're never, they're never the one in the blame. Again, I'm still talking about this narcissist spirit. They're never the one in the blame, but they will all always have or go to a people that tell them, hey, you know, this is what they did to me. And, and, you know, and just, you know, just really pouring out their heart like they are sincere and it's not from a sincere place. And then now you have this team that's that's going around that's spreading the rumor of oh my god this is what they did to them and oh my god and it, and 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 um and sometimes we call it you know in in the world aspect terminology we call it a smear campaign and so what they do you know they go around and they they, they spread the rumor of that person have done such and such and such to me and everything and and it's not even the case because usually. Um, 10 times out of 10, people are not going to go back to that person and ask them, you know, um, what really happened. They're going to take, they're going to take the, the side of the person that's really been, been telling them all these lies. They're going to be, they, they're going to listen to them. So, um, so, you know, they would, so the person that, that is not, um, able to really give their side of the story or or tell the truth for the matter they're pretty much in a place of isolation and this is where the enemy want them to be in a place of isolation isolation so they can be targeted so they can be prayed against you know it's, it's funny how so many times over the years you know it's funny how i've been prayed against you know witchcraft and all kinds of stuff people that set up witchcraft networks and all that stuff against me and stuff to pray against me but god has always you know i've always god has always prevailed god always have come through you know i've always had the victory in situations and even though at that time i may not been able to tell whatever has gone on but god has always has a way one thing about this one thing about truth truth will always prevail truth will always come out no matter what no matter what anybody else say the truth will always come out <laughs> you know sometimes it may take two, three, four, five years, but the truth will always, always come out. And the older saints will always say, you know, you can, truth will always be able to outrun a lie. So no matter how many lies that have been told on you, you know, over the years, don't even worry about it. You know, one thing my mentor used to always say, he used to always be like, well, it's a lie. So why, you know, why are you worried about it? And, you know, he used to always just, <laughs> but, you know, never, um, Never really, you know, don't, don't, don't be in a place where, oh my God, you know, cause it's easy for us to be in a place where it's like, we really want to tell our side of the story. And, but God, we have to understand that God is the vindicator and God always vindicates. And so that's another area again, that the narcissist spirit normally does. It always have a team of people that they always, you know, going to go to, they're going to always tell their side of the story. And, and this is something that we got to be very careful about. Listen. And when I talk about prayer, um, about praying in certain areas, be very wise and be very careful. Ask the Holy Spirit, you know, okay, God, um, deal with the situation, you know, because sometimes I've had it where, um, where it was the, the, the other side, you know, it wasn't what was really being said. And the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me and saying, and really spoke to my heart and said, no, it didn't go down like that. And he began to really open up my eyes to some stuff. And the whole time what you're doing, you're taking the, you're taking the side of really the, um, the person that's not the victim that's pretending to be the victim, but you're taking their side and they was the ones that did some of the most and really everything within that particular situation. And so I'm really careful because what that spirit normally does is, is that spirit will have you praying against people that is innocent you know and that's where the spirit of witchcraft come in at because now that person is being targeted by witchcraft and they, they and they are the ones that are the victim you know and you know just being careful being careful with our area of intercession you know really guarding the area of intercession especially if you are a intercessor guard those areas especially when it comes to a narcissist because a narcissist will actually use your prayer life come on here they'll use your prayer life to target someone 
that is not even to blame. They're, they're the victim in the situation. So I, again, I always ask the Holy Spirit, God, okay, open up my eyes to really what happened so I would know how to pray and, 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 and wage good warfare, engage the prayers pro properly. That's why another um, area that I always go into, and I'm going to go into it tonight again, is Ephesians. This is one of my favorite scriptures that I'm always going to deal with again when it comes to dealing with spiritual warfare because it's so necessary in dealing with this kind of spirit and any kind of spirit, you know, because, the you know, we need help. One thing about it is that we cannot do this thing on our own. We cannot, um, we cannot wage warfare, especially when it comes to spiritual things in our own flesh. And that's something that many of us, we try to battle certain things in our flesh, but we have to really get that strategy from the Holy Spirit and saying, God, how do, how do you want me to, um, to operate? How do you want me um, to, um, to really move in this thing? Because if, again, if you're not careful, uh, especially with dealing with, excuse me, dealing with um, a person that also has the spirit of rage, and I go back to the situation I dealt with years ago uh, where the son and the mother was closely bonded and he wouldn't he would never stand up and you know to his mother but he ended up having a spirit of rage and so when I did say something I remember while we was um years ago while we was dating and I remember the Lord telling me at the beginning of our relationship never say anything about his mother never you know no matter how many times and she was doing some stuff but the Holy Spirit was like, never, no matter how many times he come to you about his mother, no matter how many times, you know, she, different things that she would do. And I mean, she was, again, she was, that one was doing some stuff. But um, the Lord was like, never say anything about his mother. And I remember that's how um, um, I ended up saying something, making a small comment, uh, really wasn't a, in, a, in a bad manner. But to him and towards that, that spirit, that spirit of anger and rage, that's what really caused the, um, the physical abuse. So, so being for me being targeted, but, and it happened, you know, it, it happened twice, but it happened the same exact way. It was always, you know, my mother, my mother. And so, um, again, that's that spirit, the narcissist spirit does have a spirit of anger. Don't let it fool you. Even though, you know, it can be, it can come off kind, it come off gentle, especially, um, being, you know, the Jezebel spirit also being connected, associated with the spirit of narcissism. One thing about the Jezebel spirit, and this is something that a lot of people don't know because they expect for a person to just come in or that spirit to just come in and just be straight up, um, be straight up ruthless and be straight up nasty. But actually that spirit comes in really subtle. It comes in nice. It comes in kind, especially in your most vulnerable moments. That spirit comes in and there's a lot of times that I have discerned that spirit and the Lord would tell me, no, I don't want to, I, w I don't want you to receive anything from that person or whatever. And, and, and it can be in a most, it can be in a, a time that you know that you need, that you are in great need, that you are in great need. And so, um, that spirit would come in and it would pretend to be kind. You know what? That's one thing about that spirit is that it's, it's extreme. It can, it can be extremely kind. It can come in and help you in whatever area you need help in. And that's how that spirit is able to get in. And then before you know it, you know, you're, you're, um, you're, 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 you're had, you have, and one thing about a Jezebel spirit is that it's hard to get that spirit out. You literally have to have the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to deal with that spirit of Jezebel. Because again, it's just a master manipulator. It will cry. I've had people that have that spirit that, that just, they, you know, when I was like, no, not dealing with that person, that person would literally break down and start crying and, and just weeping and everything, but their tears were not sincere. And, and a lot of times people would tell you, oh, you know, that person is sincere. They want to, they want to reconcile. But one thing again, if that person is not delivered and they have the spirit of Jezebel or a narcissist spirit, they are not sincere. Keep that door shut because they're coming in for the kill. They're not coming in. <laughs> they're not coming in to be kind. They're not coming in to, you know, to um to truly reconcile with you on a on a good note. They're coming in for the kill. 
So, you know, you want to be um, be careful. And it also carries a, sed a seducing spirit as well, because we know that the Jezebel spirit carries a seducing spirit. So the narcissist spirit also carries a seducing spirit. So whichever way um, the, that spirit would seduce you through um, through prophecy, through the gift of, I mean, um, through any kind of way, it doesn't always have to be an area of, of sexuality, so to speak, um, of lust. But again, if you're, if you're lusting after other things, you know, then again, that spirit is, is still able to come in and able to, um, yeah, it's able to come in. So that's another area of making sure that you're, you're also careful in. And that spirit is always ready to prophesy. It's always ready to prophesy. I don't know how many times I, that, that spirit is always ready to prophesy, you know, and if, if you're being graced long enough, you know, as far as dealing, it being seasoned, I would say seasoned, not just, well, grace and season in, um, in the area of prophecy, whether it's your gift of prophecy or whether you, and you walk in the office of a prophet, one thing that you truly understand is that, you know, yeah, you may know certain things prophetically, but we're not always prophesying. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not always prophesying. Although God, God reveals certain things to me, God gives me words of prophecy in, in different areas and stuff like that, but, but a true prophet is not just boom, 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 boom. They ain't walking around all day long prophesying, trust. So, so you know, you want to be, again, you want to be careful. You want to, um, the, the scripture tells us, we'll go to the scripture. Let me, let me, let me go to some, some, some scriptures. You know, I always got to bring the word in. I don't, I don't do no teaching without bringing some, some scriptures in somewhere, <laughs> you know, um, scriptures, we have, we need the word of God. So I'm going to first John, the fourth chapter, first John, the fourth chapter in the first verse blessings. Thank you all for coming on and chiming in on tonight. Um, I want to make sure I got some notes here. So I want to make sure that I am. Um, giving you everything that um, I have on my notes. And again, you know, that, that, that actually, uh, let's say, let me see how the spirit creates a team to play, to pray against you by telling their side of the story, which is blame gaming. And that's, that's witchcraft. And I said that earlier, that's witchcraft. But the scripture I want to go to, um, and, and making sure that we, we know what we're up against, know what you're up against. First John, um, the fourth chapter says, beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many prof many false prophets have gone out into the world. And so we have to be we have to be able to test every spirit. Every spirit. You know, this is an area of maturity. Blessings and favor. Thank you all for coming on. This is an area of maturity. This is this is how God, you know, mature us in the faith. In the grace that we walk in in our gifts. You know, we, we have gifts that's in operation. A lot of times what we do, we talk about the gift of prophecy, but we never talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. We never talk about that. And one thing about um, discerning of spirits that, that, that we don't talk about either is that we automatically assume that the um, discerning of spirits always mean different types of demons. And that's not always the case. There are three different types of, when it talks about um, um, testing the spirit, the spirits, so, you know, where the gift, the gifts of um, discerning of spirits, that is the human spirit, you know, that's, that's the human spirit. And that's, that's, um, oh Lord, then that's, that's demonic spirit. And that, you know, being able to discern that spirit, being able to discern a person's spirit, being able to discern um, different types of demonic spirits. So it's not always just talking about just demonic, just demons in itself is another one I want to do. I was going to say kind of left my mind, but, um, you know, you have to be able to discern. There's even sometimes people, if I've been around people long enough and let's say, for instance, that person, um, and I'm just going to use an example. If I know how a person operate and what they, what their grace is, I know when they, when they are speaking a prophetic word or when they are teaching, I know their grace. So if they're getting ready to teach from something that I know that they don't, that, that I'll be like, that ain't them. You know, that's not that somebody else. They got that from somebody else. They copied that from somebody else. 
that word, they didn't get that word from the Holy Spirit. Because that's not even how they function. That's not how they operate. And this is where we have to be discernful and really pay attention. I've, I've, I've learned how to sit back and pay attention to how people minister, how people operate in their gifts things, and how they operate in grace. But this takes time. This takes time when, when you know how to sit and you know how to observe and you know how to see um, various people and what they walk in and you know how they, what they will say and what they will not say and how deep their grace is and how and, and what level of boldness that they actually walk in. There's certain things that I can sit back and actually discern and know that this, nah, this, that ain't come from that person. I don't know where they got it from, but they didn't, but that didn't come from the Holy Spirit. They didn't seek God for that word. And so you have to be able to discern being in a place of um being able to discern and being able to know what people actually walk in because what's happening in the body of Christ is that we're 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 receiving uh we're receiving for, uh, prophetic words um uh, from from a from a um from a, um from a tainted place so to speak from a from a from a um a impure place and outside and sometimes the person that is prophesying is literally outside of the will of God and we sit there and we we say oh my God that's confirmation yeah but we don't know how to test the spirits to see whether they are from God they of, of God we don't know how to test we don't know how to sit back because we're so quick to receive, you know, and yes, God does um, confirm, but understand the word says that God confirms with signs following. He confirms his word. And so, yes, the, 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 the word can be legit. The word can be so accurate, but you better test that spirit. And sometimes people are prophesying from a seducing spirit and yet it can be on target again and they can be accurate. But like I always say, a wish can be accurate too. And somebody in a psychic, they can be accurate too. However, you, we got to be able to test the spirit. That's the spirit. I've had a lot of people walk up to me and say stuff. I'm mean, like, no, I don't receive it. Why? Because even though it was legit, even though what they said was accurate, because I knew what they were, I was like, no, I don't, I don't receive it. And what usually happens is it opens up a whole gate. It opens up a whole door of witchcraft. And you're wondering why, oh my God, why am I dealing with this? And you have, you have, you have really come into agreement with a witch. Come on, people. There's, we, we, you know, we have to begin to actually um, discern. Sit back and discern. Don't be so quick to receive everything. We too, we too fleshly. You know, don't be so quick to receive everything. We got to be able to, to mature in the grace. Mature in the grace. And if we're speaking, if we're spending enough time, excuse me, with the Holy Spirit, uh, we, have to, we have to start spending time with the Holy Spirit, excuse me. Spend time, spend time with the Holy Spirit because why? Because he's the one that protects us, you know, and whatever we receive from him, we have to get back to the place of receiving from the Holy Spirit, you know, allowing God to have his rightful place in our life. And we have to come, we have to begin to come in under subjection under the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to move us, allow the Holy Spirit, blessings and favor, thank you all for coming on. Um, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to really, um, to, to really bring us into that place and, 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 and how, how we're hearing from Him. A lot of times what we do, we always want, we want to involve flesh. We want to involve flesh. And we wonder why we're, we're, <coughs> excuse me, we're, we're off course. Excuse me, we wonder why we are off, off course. Because why? Because we, we have a tendency, we always rely on the flesh. And the scripture even tells us, you know, blessed are those that put their trust in, in God and not put, you know, not put our trust in all of flesh. Because, you know, we end up cursed. You know, when we put our, our trust in all of flesh, you know, we end up cursed and we wonder why certain things are not happening um, the way it should in our life because we we opened up the door to to um to to those that you know speaking in our life that they shouldn't be speaking in our life and that again that goes into the area of the flesh and talk about it in the book of Galatians but first before I go over there well before I go I'm not gonna go over there but I'm gonna go again into Ephesians the sixth chapter sixth chapter and again I always talk about this area because if you, again, if you're going to be able to defeat this, this spirit, um, of narcissism, 
Uh, we're going to be able to defeat um, this area in our life and in the lives of others to see other people deliver. We're going to have to have on the whole honor. And I'm actually reading, again, from the modern English version. Um, again, I always read from the King James, but I'm reading from the uh, modern Eng English version on tonight. Thank you all for coming on again. Um, Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the tenth verse. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, um, but against principalities, against powers, against rules of darkness of this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So again, you know, we, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, even though even though sometimes you want to go at it, you know, with the individual. But we have to always remember that God really wants to be bring deliverance to that person that is a narcissist or to the person that have that Jezebel spirit. Or, you know, we have to remember that. And sometimes, yeah, even myself, I have to always remind myself too that, yeah, God, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But, uh, but again, sometimes you want to go in on some folk, you know, you know, you just want to just, you know, but God always, you know, remind us that, hey, this is what you're warring against. This is what's behind, um, behind the spirit. This is what is going on. This is the strings that, that is, that is, it's like the person is a puppet, you know, under that, under that control, under that, that, that Jezebelic control, you know, under, especially this is another one I wanted to get into, but I'm going to finish reading this first. The area of pride, pride, and that's that Leviathan spirit that comes along too with uh, with the narcissist. I think I mentioned this before. I mentioned this on my on my other live about um, the spirit of pride. It, that that spirit carries a strong, strong, strong spirit of pride, and we know that Leviathan is a principality. The scripture says that he is the king of pride. So anytime we hear the word king, that means uh, pr that means a principality. And so a principality, this is something else with it. We got to understand that a principality can be over a region. And if that person is a whole total different level, but if that person, listen, has not gotten delivered from, from different things. And that's why I always teach people and especially in area of being an apostle that making sure that you maintain a level of, of deliverance. It is so necessary. This is an area that many are not going to talk about. They're not going to talk about the area of deliverance because why? Because one thing about apostles and that we are always, you know, God places us in different regions. And so when we go to different regions, you have to understand that there are principalities. There's, 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 um, there's powers, there's uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. There, um, there's, um, there's leaders of, um, of darkness. Um, yeah, rulers of darkness. So there's rulers of darkness. So you have to understand that if a person, if we're constantly as apostles and we're constantly being on the move and we're going to different regions, then if we don't go through deliverance and allow the Holy Spirit to, um, to break off these things in our life, then when we go to other regions, we're actually coming into agreement with the, with the principality that is in that region. And so that's why in a, in a, in a lot of regions, we wonder why, oh my God, why we, you know, we got all these apostles in these regions, but nothing is really being capped off. Nothing is really being happening. Nothing is really happening because one thing about apostles, they, they, we, we unlock regions. So we unlock regions so that people can, um, can be able to be delivered and be set free. We have a mantle, a governmental mantle upon our life that causes us to be able to unlock and lock regions. And so God has given us that key to go into region. So if you go into a region and you see that there's always um, a murder that's going on, there's always a level of um of um of of, of sex trafficking or a, a, um, a level of um of of um, of mental health in that in that region. Um, then you have to, and, and, and no one is getting delivered in that region. Then we always have to go back to, okay, God, we have all these, all these, um, all these, um, apostles that's in this region, but how come people are not being delivered? That's because we have to understand that we as apostles, we, even as prophets that, that is, that is, um, that is moving to different regions, always have to all, before you move to another region, Always make sure you go through your deliverance. You have to go through deliverance process while you, before you transition to another region. Then again, everybody is not going to teach you that because we always want to be on a move. 
We always want to be on the move. We always want to act like we're doing a whole lot. But God will give us wisdom, and that's that's your strategy. That's a, that's a strategic key that God gives us. That when we go to another region, yes, you may have um a, you may have a level of of murder in the region that you're in. However, something still is supposed to be taking place in that region. And again, it also comes by way of intercession. You always have to have a group of inter of intercessors that's always plowing the ground, always hitting the ground. That's no that no know how to go in but it but that goes also with making sure that intercessors are also um also walking in deliverance that's another area it, and every, we have to we have to come off of i don't need no deliverance that's pride that's the spirit of pride of thinking that you don't need no deliverance you good you straight no we all need deliverance especially when you coming out of um coming out of a place and going into a place, there's some, there, there's a, there's a, what I call, a, um, you got to know how to, what's, what's the word I want to use? You got to know how to go through, um, take some stops. You know, you got to know how to take a stop, uh, a rest stop, so to speak, you know, and, and, and get some deliverance and allow God to replenish you and allow God to, um, to, 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 to put some downloading you in the next strategy. Because one thing about, I know I'm on narcissism, but, but one thing about, um, going into different regions is that there's a strategy for each region. There's a strategy for each region. So the way you may have moved in the last region may not be the same way that you are moving in the region that you're going into. So that's why it's important for us to take stops. It's important for apostles, you know, leaders to take stops before you go into that next region. What God is speaking to you about that region before you get there. So when you get there, you already have the, you already have the strategy. So when you go in, you're going in strong. You're not going in blindsided. And that's the area of how the enemy begin to really um, begin to knock some of us down and begin to knock us out and we wonder why oh my god why 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 so and so is knocked down because why because they didn't spend time with god they didn't get the strategy to be able to go in and that's another area that's reason why i also teach apostles that you got to learn how to be quiet there's too many of us that's always posting on facebook my next move i'm going over here and i'm going over there but you got to learn how to be quiet especially in this hour and and and, and that's your strategy we got to learn how to be strategic we can't tell Tell everybody everything and everywhere that we go. I never, I never tell no, I never tell anybody where I'm going unless it's people that's really closely connected. Something they gotta be really closely connected because I'm not that kind of person. I don't broadcast everything, and everybody don't need to know because you have to understand that witches is waiting for you. That the enemy is waiting. He already see you coming in the spirit, and so why would you even let everybody know? You know that where you going next. So again, that's why I always I always teach people and tell people, listen, learn how to get some strategy. There's too many apostles and, and prophets and fivefold leaders that's running around in their gifts, but they have no wisdom. They have no strategy whatsoever. And then when you try to tell them something, they're looking at you like you're the one in the wrong. Like, you know, they can't come under that, under that, that, that wisdom. But those are wisdom keys that God wants to give us, especially in this hour that we're in. The church is not going to move the same way that we move in time past. We got to get that out of our out of our mindset and saying God this is how we the way we move before is the way we do we're going to move now you end up jacking yourself up in this hour because why because your head is out and the enemy wants your head to be out so he can take your head in this hour and that's why it's important that we do that we that we come down that we come down off of our pride that we come down off our house I don't care who it is I don't care listen and that's where that's where again dealing with that spirit of narcissism you know, because that's a because that's that's a dangerous spirit because it, it's a spirit of pride and it's almost like you gotta break their back. You gotta break the back of Leviathan off of them in the spirit in in, in your in the, in your intercession. You gotta allow God, you know, to flow through you to break the back of Leviathan, that back of pride. Because like the scripture says, that God give grace to the humble. Listen, God resists the proud. So you don't want to you don't want to be one of those that 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 God is resisting when you trying to when you trying to move out you know you got to have grace we got to have grace God resists the proud but He give grace to the humble to the humble so we got to be able to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God 
We got to know how to, and that's, that's, that's strategy. And that's something I teach on a lot of times. I teach on spiritual warfare because many of us don't know how to wage good warfare. This has been an area I've been teaching on for a long time. I've been teaching on warfare for a minute. And so, um, so, you know, God has graced me to teach on spiritual warfare, but we have to learn how that in order for you to wage good warfare, it takes, it takes us coming down off our high horse and really allowing God to, to, you know, to come to the place of being humble. We got to be humble before the Lord because that's how the enemy, you know, that's how we, we resist the enemy. You know, that's how you're going to resist the enemy. You can't resist it. The enemy is not going to flee without you being submitted. The enemy is not going to flee unless you are submitted. So submitted is a powerful, it is a powerful tool against the enemy. It's very strategic in knowing how to humble yourself. And that's why it's important that you know what to humble yourself to. That's why I talked about earlier about coming into relationship and why, you know, that spirit of narcissism, it wants you to just submit to just anything. But no, no, we don't submit to just anything. We don't submit to anything, especially when they're all out of, out of alignment and they're all out of the will of God. And then, you know, folk want you to submit and they're all outside. No, God, no, 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 no. You know, you protect your submission. Protect your submission. You know, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil make you feel like, you know, well, you know, you got to be anti-submitted. You know, you, you, you walking in pride and no, no, protect your submission. God didn't call us to submit to everything. And especially if you're going into a marriage covenant, God did not, listen, God did not tell you, it's not having you to submit to mess. I know a whole lot of wonderful women of God that are married. And they, and, but at the same time, they're like, nah, they, they discern. They know when their husband is off. <laughs> Come on. They, when they know when their husband is, is off and they like, nah, I ain't submit to that. You know, blessings and favor. Thank you all for coming on. Thank you cuz for coming on. But you know, you know, God, you know, God really, you know, God will let a wife know. He'll, he'll let that woman know. No, that ain't even biblical. And there's times when, um, when, when, you know, men and women both, not just, you know, I'm not just going to just beat up on the men. I ain't going to talk about the men. You know, we do love you men, but you know, um, but at the same time, you know, that, can, that does operate through a woman as well as, as, um, you know, you know, even, you know, twisting the scripture. You know, you know, people would people would use the scripture against you if you're not if you're not um deserveful, they would take the script, they will manipulate you through the word of God. So you have to even discern when it comes to the word and when people are bringing the word to you, excuse me, because they will use the word of God to manipulate and dominate. So just because they come with the word don't mean that it's that it's coming from the right spirit. <laughs> you know, and again, that's what that spirit of narcissism um, does it, it, um, it comes in, you know, it has, it has the spirit of pride. Um, I'm just, um, saying this again, it has the, the spirit of pride, the spirit of Leviathan, um, the spirit of Jezebel is associated to it. Um, sometimes if you see that it doesn't get its way, you know, it, it has a spirit of rage. That's why you got to be really careful when it comes to the spirit of narcissism. Because the other area, like I was talking about earlier, about the area of, um, you know, the behavior um, side, the psychological side of the narcissist and um, in the mental side. And that's why it's really important, especially in this hour. And I talked about this before, why it's important that we're praying um, about the mind in this hour, the mind is so many people that, that are suffering from mental illness. They look well on the outside, but, um, but inwardly in their, their mind, I've seen some people, even when I was in another region some time ago and, um, God was really, um, caused me to become really aware to the, to the mental health. And I saw some stuff that I've never, I was like, Oh my God, had never seen that level of mental health before. Where, uh, where people was literally, where I remember it was like, it was one person, no, it was two people that I remember coming into contact with that they literally had a whole network. It was like, uh, 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 legions of demons that they, I was like, God, what in the world? But you got to understand that within that region, it was actually one thing about demons is this in a region. There's something that, you know, I, I just got to go on here and just. You know, but <laughs> one thing, one thing about being in a region is that um, when demons manifest through a person, you know, depending in that region, 
when it manifests to a person, that's that's the spirits that's in operation in that region. And so, you know, you have to pay attention. But there's many times that I saw, I saw times when, like I said, it was two people I came into contact with that had, um, they had, like, it was like a German um, Nazi. Um, it, it was, it was the worst. I never heard. Oh my God. I never heard. I mean, it was, it was an old ancient spirit, you know, just, and I knew it was like a general, general of demons that was in, that was lodged within that person. And so, um, but I, you know, dealing with spirits, you know, but, um, uh, it was a lot of things that I was able to, to see dealing with the men, the mental health. And they were, and when I say it was their, their mental health, they was totally just gone, you know, and there was one guy, I remember that, um, he, he looked fine from the outside, but then yeah, he just had this, just, I've never seen a person where they just had this cussing demon, but just, they just come out and just start cussing. I'm like, wow. So, you know, God really began to just really reveal a lot to me, um, in my travels of going to different regions and really seeing a lot, um, of stuff that really dealing with the area of mental illness and how to really detect those, those, you know, detect that area and being in a place of intercession, but it takes strong intercession. If you're going to really, um, God really begin to use you in this hour. And that's another area that I do teach on. I teach on, um, uh, I teach on intercession, but I teach on it also from the government, from the government, from, the, um, apostolic, so to speak, um, standpoint of, of how to go into different regions and really um, being able to discern the different types of spirits within that region and being in the place of, of your of your intercession, uh, making sure that you're properly in the place of intercession, that you'll be able to war, again wage good warfare and at first begin to to um, that first um, really begin in your um, in your submission to God to God first. Your, your submission is unto God first. And that's, that's, and that's something that we have to understand. If your submission is not unto God first, then you would not properly submit to, to anyone that even God bring in your life, whether it's to mentor, um, 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 whether for you to sit under to mentor, um, any type of leadership, because I've been tried in many areas of my submission. And there's been times when I was even in the workplace and really came had to come under submission of under a leader that was over me. And there were certain things that I've experienced under that leader. But at the same time, I had to I had to keep continue to pray for that for that particular leader. And before you knew it, God had changed the heart of that leader, or God just completely moved that leader on out of the way and brought somebody else in that gave me favor. So you know, so you know, it's it's it's. It's a lot of areas when it comes to um, the area of submission, um, your area of grace that God will have for you to walk in. And it's so very necessary that you know your area, that you know your range, so to speak. You know your jurisdiction, as I always use that word jurisdiction. Know what your grace is. Know what you call to. You know, there are certain things that some of us is not, um, we're not grace to target and, and that's why I'm really careful in making sure that when, when it comes to targeting certain things that, um, that we're careful. I don't carry everybody into certain areas with me because, you know, I still, I'm still, um, I'm still one of those that, that protect, um, the souls of people. And sometimes you can drag people along and they're not ready for that level of battle. They're not ready for that level of warfare. So I'm really, I'm really, I use a lot of wisdom in that particular area and what I really share, what I really put out, because I don't want anybody to be wounded. Um, I don't want anybody to get out there and they think, okay, I can do what somebody else is doing. And that's not the grace that God has called us to walk in. God does give us, uh, we go from, we go from glory to glory, you know, so you don't start, you know, when you was in the first grade, you didn't jump up to college. So God does take us from level to level. You know, and, and God take us from uh, from dimension to dimension, and so um, we always have to be mindful of those that are all that also that are surrounded around us, and make sure that God is bringing the right people in our life that we can pour um, certain areas in, so that people can be can truly walk in what God has called them to walk in. And so again, just coming on, just sharing this area of narcissism, along with the other stuff that I didn't know I was going to share on tonight, but really wanting to really give you, um, um, really go into targeting um, this area of narcissism and what to look for. I've shared on my page. Um, it's a gentleman. 
Um, his name is um. Oh my God, Quan um 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 Holiday. I shared his his um one of his videos on my on my post, and he talks about the area of um just different things as far as a narcissist um in the relationship. And um, it, it's so much stuff that I know that I've seen that I'm like, God, it, it, I mean, it's strongly on point. And so um, I wanted to also just throw that out there as well, you know, kind of um, check out some of his, his, um, his, his, um, cause I, I like his content, you know, excuse the language and everything, but I, I, I like his content. Anytime somebody, you know, any, anytime someone is, is giving you some type of whether, whether it's, it's, somebody from the world, whatever, but if they have a level of, of knowledge in a particular area, guess what? I'm that kind to be like, I don't, I'm not that kind of person to be like, well, you know, he ain't, you know, or whatever. I don't look at that. But if a person is carrying a certain, a certain level of knowledge or whatever that I know I need, oh yeah, I'm going to definitely chime in on what you're talking about. You know, so I ain't, you know, I, don't, I ain't walking, I ain't that great with that. I don't, I don't know how to, you know, sit back and listen to what somebody is saying or something that I need that I know I need to hear. So um, just those particular areas as well. I'm going to continue to come in, come on and talk about the area of narcissism. Like I said, I deal, I deal more so in the area of what to target and different types of spirits that's behind it. And yeah, I do um, on my posts, I may share certain things that, you know, as far as um, in a relationship, so to, um, so to speak, and what a narcissist does and everything and, and, and how they react. You know, but um, I will be back again and sharing um, more areas. And we're just going to see how the Lord really began to expound and really begin to um, to talk more in this particular area. And so um, thank you all for coming on once again. Um, I believe that is all that I am going to share on tonight. If not, I'll just post it. Um, but thank you all for coming on. And I strongly... Um, I strongly uh, appreciate you. So I will be seeing you again at another time. Um, I don't know what day I'll be coming on. Usually I just come, I just jump on. Um, I don't have a particular date, so to speak. So I just jump on whenever um, I, I have that time or the Holy Spirit really leads me to come on. So, excuse me. Thank you for coming on. Happy Sunday. I'm like, the day is Sunday? But <laughs> happy Sunday to all of you. And I will be seeing you again. Uh, shortly. So have a wonderful night. And I'm going to pray before I go off. Let me pray before I go off. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you on tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your word declares it's not by might nor by power, but it is by your Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit on tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we acknowledge you, Lord God, because you said in your word, Father, the trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge you and you will direct our path. So, Father, we acknowledge you, you, oh God, on tonight, Father, because we understand that without you, we can do absolutely nothing. And Lord God, we don't want to do anything without you. So, Father, we thank you that you are our protector. We thank you, Lord God, that you always watch over us, oh God, that you keep us, Lord God. God, in the palm of your hands, Father, and Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you that you continue to strengthen your people in this hour, Father, that you continue, Lord God, to give them downloads, that you continue, Father, in the name of Jesus, to open up the eyes of their understanding, Father, and that you will cause them to see, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in areas, Lord God, that they may be, may be weak in, Father, I ask that you would just work in those areas in their life, Father, in the name of Jesus, even in areas of their mind, Lord God, I thank you for total restoration to their mind, their thoughts, oh God, in the name of Jesus, if there's if they're dealing with any kind of trauma. Father, I thank you, oh God, for for just um for 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 deliverance in those areas, Lord God, in their thoughts and their mind, Father, and and, and and things, Lord God, that 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 may be tormenting their mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for for just and, and also dealing with areas of their heart. Father, you will go in and dig up those areas, Father, that, that, that may be plaguing their heart, Lord God, those, those attachments, those emotional attachments, Father, those strongholds, oh God, is in the mind, Father, even those soul ties, and Father, not just, uh, not just sexual soul ties, but Lord God, even being connected to the wrong people, Father, I ask the Lord God that you will break up those soul ties in the mighty name of Jesus, any form of witchcraft and divination, hallelujah, Lord God, in the nomos shandia, 
Hane ko raba basama maso. Hare ne ko re mashamere ki oso raba bashete. Hare in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you will break up those areas, oh God. Father, I even ask that you will break up the fallow ground, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that, that, that Lord God, that the, that the word would be received, oh God, in those areas, those hard areas, Father. Lord God, you will break up those areas, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will come in, Lord God, and bring forth deliverance. In their hearts, oh God, and Lord God, in the name of you, that you would that you would break off the back of pride and arrogance, oh God, in the name of Jesus, the the spirit, the the, the spirit of, of Leviathan, oh God, how they to be broken off of their life in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we would come under under submission to you, because your word says, Lord God, you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. So Lord God, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that in due season you will exalt us, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, for being our shield, our buckler. Father, I continue to pray for those, oh God, that 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 may um that may have been abused by a narcissist, Lord God. And I also pray for the narcissist, oh God, that Lord God, you will bring in deliverance, oh God, in the areas, oh God, in their life, Father, that they would that they would be set free and delivered, Lord God, from the abuse that they have suffered when they were younger. Lord God, any abandonment that they have received when they were younger and, and did not receive the love, Lord God, that they were supposed to receive, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I just ask, Lord God, you will go in. Lord God, you will break in, Lord God, and bring forth deliverance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because, Father, we do want them to be delivered as well. Father, not only those, oh God, that's been suffering, but even those, Lord God, that's been suffering under the hand of abuse, that they'll begin to come out, oh God, that, hallelujah, that the spirit of pride will no longer hold them in bondage, that they begin to come out, Lord God, and even, and even, and even um, to, to break that silence, oh God, that they'll come out of a place of isolation, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, they begin to, hallelujah, cry out, oh God, God, that they cry unto you first, oh God. But then they also, Lord God, I ask that you will place people around them, trusted people around them, Lord God, that they can that that they can go to, oh God, that they receive their deliverance, that they receive their restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I thank you on tonight. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you for deliverance. I just thank you for deliverance on tonight. I thank you, Father, for deliverance. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for healing hearts. I thank you for healing the mind on tonight. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing the mind on tonight. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing the mind on tonight. Father, I ask that you would dispatch your angels, oh God, that you, Lord God, will organize the mind Sunday, orchestrate, oh God, hallelujah, their deliverance, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah that they will not be able to stay in that place oh God father deliver us oh God hallelujah send forth deliverance father because your word declares that you sent your word and you healed hallelujah you healed Lord God and you delivered them from their destructions father in the name of Jesus Lord God I thank you for sending your word I thank you father hallelujah that your Holy Spirit oh God hallelujah is going in now Lord God and, and, and pulling them out father hallelujah that they're being drawn out oh God God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that your anointing will break and destroy every yoke, every yoke of bondage, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, I bless you on tonight. I pray over their families, hallelujah. I pray over their families, oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Those that are watching tonight, Father, I plead the blood over their families, over their household, oh God, over their jobs, hallelujah. Everything, Lord God, hallelujah, that you have given to them. Father, I plead the blood over them, oh God, on tonight. I thank you for protecting them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Especially in this hour that we're in, Lord God, you protect them. That you continue to shield them, oh God. Shield them from the enemy, Father. That no evil come nigh unto their dwelling in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. That they, Lord God, come into the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that they will abide in you, oh God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, because you are our protector. You are our safety, oh God. We look to you, Father, for everything, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I even ask on tonight that you would deliver from lust. Mm. 
is another area. Deliverance from lust, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Oh, Shia. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I give you praise and I give you honor. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Once again, thank you all for coming on. Bless you, cuz. And all of you that's coming on, that have come on on tonight, I love you all. And I will be seeing you all soon. And once again, I love you. And of course, the Lord loves you first. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful night. God bless.